Is it a role-playing game, a western, a spy series, a show about Jedi, bounty hunters, Mandalorians? Is it even a series about the Mandalorian? It's all of these at the same time. This series is nothing more than a platform for Disney to launch their new products. A series about bo a series about Baby Yoda, a series about Boba, a series about Ahsoka. This show tells nothing and relies instead on cameos and references to things that people like without ever doing anything with them to make sure nobody gets upset. Well, like with The Force Awakens, I get upset. The Mandalorian is the easiest content to make in the world since the writers don't have to invent anything and yet they fail spectacularly. Everything is given to them. Boba Fett, IG-11, The Force, The Jedi, The Mandalorians, Tatooine, or The Fall of the Empire, and they are unable to write a decent episode with all of that. When the show started, the writers already knew Mandalore was destroyed, their only job was to bring Mando there, and for some reason they started the episode with a useless side quest with IG-11, and ended it with Mando falling into the water like a stupid idiot. And I don't even dare to talk about the middle of the episode between the action scenes that come out of nowhere or the fact that we're watching the episode twice. I don't understand how anyone can write such garbage. And the reason they did it, aside from their inability to write a coherent story, is that they wanted to do fan service and show the mythos or. Because they're clearly not interested in writing a story, all they want is a montage of cool stuff to make people say oh and ah in front of their screen. And I know what some people are going to tell me. When Ryan Johnson made his movie, many fans hated it even though it was different. Firstly, no, the movie is not different from the others. It's only subversive. It does the same things as the other episodes, but with a twist to disturb the viewer. It's a completely stupid writing style, but most of all it's objectively crap because it doesn't respect the established universe, the lame story of JJ, and the expectation set by The Force Awakens. I could explain in detail why The Last Jedi is not different, but I won't bother because the movie sucks anyway. The same and bad or different and bad is still bad. In case you have forgotten, it's a movie where two idiots save animals that are going to be recaptured 10 minutes later or that are going to die because they're probably unable to live in the wild, while the slaves are most likely going to be beaten to death and all of this happened because the two idiots parked on the beach instead of a parking lot in order to solve a problem that doesn't even belong in Star Wars. After a random character told them to see another random character because she couldn't do it herself for some stupid reason. Not a single scene in this movie makes any sense and the only ones that do were cut, as if Ryan did everything in his power to remove any scene that could have been deemed tolerable by people who use their brain. They had time for me to milk that big alien, but to show any human emotion, now nah, we don't have time for that. So no fans don't hate The Last Jedi because it's different, but because it's objectively a garbage movie. Due to the confusion between being different and claiming to be different but actually being trash that disrespects the universe and characters, Disney learned the wrong lessons and produced a terrible episode 9 that fails to please both those who love and those who hate The Last Jedi. So now we're stuck with Star Wars series that are identical and bad because they've addressed the wrong problem. You would think that only season 3 of The Mandalorian is bad because of how atrocious it is, but no, the same is true of the first two seasons, as well as Kenobi and The Boba Show. How can someone with a functioning brain write such a scene? Seriously, what the hell is Boba doing? It doesn't make any sense, but the action is very cool, so I guess no one cares. And what's even more hilarious is that the writers are relying too much on the old characters, yet they don't know how to write them. Ahsoka is lame, she has no emotions or personality anymore. Sure, it's 25 years later, but that makes her incredibly boring to watch. Her fighting style looks silly in live action, and her facial expressions are awkward, as if the actress is unable to move in her costume. As for bo I don't know who this character is supposed to be, but it's definitely not her. Why is she so nice and harmless? Do you think we'll ever see something like this in the Disney era? Little skinny. Isn't she? <gasps> oh. Are we going to ignore her actions as a leader of a terrorist organization that enabled Maul to take control of Mandalore, which ultimately contributed to the planet's destruction? I guess we're just going to pretend that she's a poor victim. Disney wants us to believe that she's just a nice person, but the truth is she's not worthy of leading Mandalore. The problem is that instead of making her an anti-hero or a complex character, the writers decided to ignore everything and make us believe that she's just a regular human being. 
Even if it's 25 years later, it doesn't change anything. We need to see her redeem herself before we can be on her side. But no, we're supposed to imagine that she's nice. Who can enjoy watching a character that has become so empty and lame? It's crazy. Luke just looks dead and I'm not even going to talk about Cat Bane, who was thrown to the lions just to entertain us for two episodes. It all reminds me of a quote from Mark. Ryan needed me to be a certain way to make the ending effective. It's amusing that the show is using all these characters even though they are nothing like they used to be. The writers should create new characters instead of twisting the existing ones to fit their stupid story. I don't understand why everyone is so excited to see these characters when they're just poor imitations of the ones we love. I've spent hours reading comments on the internet and it's way too funny. There's a civil war going on in the community between those who love Endor and think the Mandalorian lacks vision, those who just want to see Baby Yoda and Mando go on adventures, those who want to see more Jedi, those who want to see more bo and Mandalore, and those like me who just want to listen to Bill's stupid jokes in the cantina for 40 minutes. As a result, there is a growing discontent and people are starting to say that season 3 is poorly written and poorly paced, but the hilarious thing is that it has always been the case. The writing quality of the series is nightmarish, but people are only now noticing it because the third season is juggling between the different storylines to try and satisfy everyone, but it's not working. Every week the new episode caters to only one part of the community so the rest find it bad. But the following week the episode caters to another community, so now the community that enjoyed last week's episode is complaining to, while the community that the new episode is for thinks the show is great again. And it's like that for 8 episodes, it's fascinating. The series throws just enough breadcrumbs to make sure everyone keeps tuning in. This will enable us to tell great stories, inspired by the perfect mix of creative excellence enhanced by data-driven audience insights, delivered in ways that consumers want. It's clear that Disney knows how to manipulate its audience. The Mandalorian is nobody's favorite show because aside from the horrible writing, it tries to be five different things at the same time that are completely incompatible which frustrates viewers. What's even funnier is that since everybody is frustrated, people are complaining on the internet, giving the impression that Star Wars fans are once again never happy. The Mandalorian uses the same formula over and over again. It's very safe and reliable. What you see is what you get. At no point does the show require you to use your brain and the few strong emotions it provides are positive. The problem with this style of writing is that it's lazy but more importantly it has diminishing returns. Will you clap the second time you see Luke's cameo? And the third time will you finally realize that Luke was here just for the sake of being here and that there's absolutely nothing behind it? Everything that happens in the show is meant to be cool and there's no substance behind any of it. You've got Mendo killing a guy with his jetpack, it's so cool. You've got Mendo getting shot 50 times, it's so cool. You've got Mandalorians getting killed by a monster because they use stupid ropes, it's so cool. You've got Boba doing cool stuff. You've got Mendo walking, 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 walking. And it's so cool. This flashback is 4 minutes long and we learn absolutely nothing about the character, but there's a very cool chase and very cool lightsabers. Think about it, in more than 15 hours of content we've made almost no progress. In comparison Frodo had time to go to Mordor twice, but that's typical of modern series, it's the same thing with Rings of Power. They have a story worth 2 hours of content that they stretch out over 10 hours to make a full season. The old shows with 24 episodes per season have fewer fillers than 8 episodes of a Disney Plus series. It's as if the writers were paid $10,000 per word on Disney+. Plus. Let me give you a quick rundown on what we've learned so far about the two characters. His name is Baby Yoda, he was a Padawan, then he wasn't, then he was again, then he wasn't again, and now he's a Mandalorian. It took 22 episodes. He's a Mandalorian, he's not a Mandalorian anymore, he's a Mandalorian again. It took 22 episodes. Now let me break down the main plot for you. In season 1, Mendo finds a baby and protects it from the Empire. In season 2a, Mendo brings the baby back to the Jedi. In season 2b, the baby comes back which makes the main plot of season 2a useless. In season 3, in 6 episodes, they visit Mandalore and bo gets the saber. So in 15 hours of content, we found a baby and visited Mandalore. That's crazy. 
One could believe the show has two parts, one with Baby Yoda and one with Mandalore. Unfortunately, the arc with Baby Yoda doesn't really exist since it's unfinished and abandoned, because it's more important to keep the viewers who are just watching for him rather than telling a complete story. So he's back, he's useless, and it destroys the whole point of the main plot of season 2, which by the way, ends with a cameo. If you don't know who Luke is, the ending is pretty bad. Sure, everyone knows who Luke is, but it's just crazy to think that the big event at the end of season 2 is the appearance of a character that doesn't belong to the series and never shows up again. When the whole ending relies on a guy who looks like nothing and is only here for 2 minutes, it really makes you question how exciting the characters and the story of the Mandalorian truly are. Especially when you realize that they fired Gina and it has absolutely no impact on the story. And don't tell me there's a lot going on in the subplots. The show attempts to develop a storyline around the New Republic, but it's useless since the New Republic is as insignificant as it is pathetic in the sequels. You can write any story you want, the Republic was destroyed like it was nothing in The Force Awakens, so it's very hard to be interested in it. And it's very difficult to be interested in the plot about Luke's Jedi Temple as well when you know that he's going to try to assassinate his nephew, and that in the end it's Rey who is going to create a temple. Besides that, we have a great plot with pirates who attack the city because they wanted to drink in a school and Carl let one of them go. As for Bo-Katan, she's a puppet and her story moved through the power of the script. Wow, Mendo fell in the water like a stupid idiot and now she gets to be part of the gang. Wow, since Mendo fell in like a stupid idiot, she's allowed to take off her helmet now because she saw a monster. Wow, a dinosaur kidnapped a kid and now they trust her. Wow, a monster took Mendo's sword without a fight and now it's hers. It's crazy. bo is here, we don't know how she feels about any of this, and we just get a montage of random events that magically move her story forward. In the middle of all this, there's an episode of Black Mirror for some reason that is completely detached from the rest. And I can't even count the number of times a creature appears out of nowhere to kick off some dumb new storyline. So no, the subplots don't offer any value to the show. On top of that, the series has absolutely no stakes because Mendo has literal plot armor, which he doesn't need anyway because the stormtroopers are extremely stupid. They're so dumb it's a wonder they managed to live past the age of 10 without killing themselves by accident. But that's typical of Disney Lucasfilm's writing. You know how Disney makes every male character dumb these days because they forgot how to write female characters? Well, it's the same idea here. They have to make the villains dumb because they are unable to write competent heroes anymore. I don't understand how anyone is supposed to find these action scenes cool when it's just a bunch of stupid people dying one after the other. Chapters 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22 are either fillers or useless side quests that don't advance the main storyline in any significant way. It's ironic that they're called chapters when there's so little story to them. I love how they're giving us a recap of the story at the beginning, as if we needed to be reminded of anything. It's only here to pad the runtime. The problem isn't that The Mandalorian has no story, many shows don't. The issue is that the writers are acting like they do have one with their fan service and their setups that take 5 episodes to be mentioned again. Instead of simply writing a show about Mendo the monster hunter or a show about Mendo the savior of Mandalore, they try to do both at the same time which completely destroys any momentum the show has. I'm sure the time spent on Coruscant in chapter 19 wasn't completely useless, but it came out of nowhere. It was squeezed in between the exploration of Mandalore and some side quests. When by some miracle the story moves forward, it's so rushed that in the end it's as if nothing had happened. Mando is unlocking new gear way too fast. It makes me wonder why the writers gave him so little at the start, only to have him acquire a jetpack and full armor so quickly. Mando finds a new family in less than 20 minutes and we're supposed to believe he'll retire in episode 4 of season 1. In episode 5 of the Boba show we are told that Mando is no longer a Mandalorian, but two episodes later he is again. Why does he take off his helmet so early in the series and why does he take it off in front of others so quickly? Why does Mando meet Baby Yoda in episode 1 instead of later in the season? Mando hates droids. No droids. No droids. I heard ya. You don't have to say it twice. By the end of the season, he loves them. There's nothing to be sad about. I've never been alive. I'm not sad. Yes, you are. The guy was traumatized by robots because they killed his parents when he was a kid, but he's suddenly not racist anymore. That's deep. 
In Chapter 8, Mendo falls in love with IG-11, but this payoff is not earned at all. And on top of that, he now likes every droid. Oh, so he likes droids now. Thanks, little guy. The writers really believe that they wrote an arc. It's so sad. The entire investigation in Chapter 22 is solved in less than 15 minutes. There's not enough time to be shocked or intrigued by anything. The investigation is neither clever nor intelligent, and any fool with a pen could have written the same story. Uh, well, to be fair, you'd have to be slightly more idiotic than the average person to write a scene like this, so maybe just not any fool could have done it. Since the case was so easy to solve, there was no need for Mandalorians. And surprise, the villain was the only character introduced in the story. That's crazy. The truth is, this series is a bit like Rise of Skywalker with the death of Chewie. They kill him and literally two minutes later you find out he wasn't dead. It's one step forward and one step back. They make you think something is happening and technically something did happen, but in reality it was pointless. It was there to make you feel sad for two minutes and then happy again. I think the most interesting moment in the whole show happened in Chapter 3 with Mendel's ball. It's not subtle and it's not amazing, but at least it's something. The post credit scene at the end of season 2 is a perfect example of how much the writers love to rush to the cool part. This scene should have been at the end of season 1, not at the beginning. The Boba Show should have ended with this shot to make you reflect on everything that happened in the season and everything that will happen as a result, but because it's Disney Lucasfilm, the characters go pew 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 and the scene is just there to make you clap. Disney Lucasfilm has to make sure the viewers are wagging their tail because if they stop even for a second to think about what they just saw, they will notice how garbage it was. The story of The Mandalorian is poorly paced and rushed, but more importantly, it's complete garbage. The first episode is very good. People die and Mendo looks like a badass. He doesn't say much because his actions speak for themselves, especially in the first scene. The episode establishes some rules and lays the foundations of the Bounty Hunter universe. Then the show quickly devolves into a pile of garbage and by episode 4 it's nothing more than an unintentionally badly written comedy. Why does this bounty hunter, I repeat, bounty hunter, commit suicide by attempting to murder baby Yoda instead of running away or begging Mendo for mercy? Does he not realize that he needs to be alive in order to collect the money? Why is there a beacon that once triggered orders the Republic to bomb an area without any question? It seems like this new Republic could use a Death Star. Why does everyone know who the Mandalorians are, but no one knows who the Jedi are? You are a Mandalorian. Your ancestors rode the great Mythosaur. You are a Mandalorian, right? Why does nobody know who the Jedi are five years after Luke Skywalker saved the galaxy and less than 30 years after the fall of the Republic? I still don't understand what happened. Neither do I. You expect me to search the galaxy for the home of this creature and deliver it to a race of enemy sorcerers? Why does she say, the force. If she doesn't know who the Jedi are, why is he the only guy who remembers Dooku and the Jedi? Baby Yoda can't speak and doesn't even understand the difference between right and wrong. I'm not sure how a race that needs to be babysat for a century could exist, but what makes me laugh is that he probably spent 20 years in Jedi school and clearly didn't learn anything. Even almost 30 years later, he still doesn't understand anything, which means he would have spent at least 50 years in a Jedi temple doing nothing. As for Mendo, he's stupid and incompetent. His plan to kill the bad guy is to hang on to a ship in mid-air, and he doesn't make sure the guy actually died. His plan to kill the sandworm is completely stupid. Wow, we are going to use ropes, that way everybody dies. Instead of throwing the grenades across the hole, he runs with them and ends up getting shot 50 times. Instead of taking cover, he just lets the stormtroopers shoot him. In case you have forgotten, his armor doesn't cover his whole body at all. And finally, my favorite scene of the series. He asks a baby who doesn't understand anything to fix his electric cables and the baby almost dies. Hold them apart. <laughs> anyway, Mendo is very stupid, but since he can't die, it doesn't matter. You're nitpicking, I hear you say. Well, you're wrong, but alright. Let's look at the climax of season 1, which is particularly dumb. 
flying dinosaurs attack Carl. As always in this show, there's monsters coming out of nowhere, no one knows why, but it doesn't matter. Baby Yoda saves him and literally nobody says anything about it. The guy used magic, but nobody cares. Anyway, thanks to the dinosaurs that came out of nowhere, Carl lets Mendo leave and decides to help him. That's convenient. Then there's a lot of tension because the bad guy is going to look in the empty cradle, but he receives a phone call at the last second. The guy on the phone tells him the baby is not inside. I'm not sure how anyone can come up with such a stupid scene, but it gets better. The bad guy orders his men to shoot at the bar and for some reason only the bad guys are killed. Why does the big bad guy kill the bad guys? Because he's bad, obviously. Then the story is interrupted for over 3 minutes by two guys making fun of how dumb and cliche the show is like it's some kind of parody. And then the episode is filled with the exact issues they made fun of but we're supposed to believe it's all very serious. It's almost like they think we're idiots. Being meta doesn't make your story clever, Taika. The bad guy waits until night despite having 250 soldiers giving enough time for IG-11 to arrive. The primary function of IG-11 is to protect and nurture, so he goes into the city to kill a hundred stormtroopers with a child in his arms. It just makes sense. Then one of the villains uses a flamethrower even though they need Baby Yoda's blood. Anyway, I'll stop here. This part is clearly a work of art. Everything is just so incredibly well written. I could talk about episode 4 as well, but I don't want to damage your brain. Now, let's take a look at the climax of season 2. The part where Mendo takes off his helmet to say goodbye to Baby Yoda is laughable. Wow, it's so touching, he takes off his helmet like Vader to look at his son with his own eyes. I would have cried if only he hadn't already removed it three episodes earlier. Taking off his helmet now has no symbolic value because he's not a Mandalorian anymore. All I see is a guy who takes off his helmet because he has nothing to lose, not because he loves Baby Yoda. By removing his helmet, the writers admit that Mandalorians are an inferior culture. And what also kills me that the relationship between the two is absolutely non-existent since he's a baby. Baby Yoda does something stupid and Mendo asks him to stop. That's all there is to it. As I mentioned earlier, instead of showing us Mendo's day-to-day -day life for a few episodes, the writers immediately rushed to the Baby Yoda storyline. Because of this, we have no idea how Baby Yoda has affected Mendo as a person. Has the baby turned Mendo into a different or a better man? It's impossible to tell. People who believe that Baby Yoda changed Mendo are imagining things as it is his duty to protect foundlings. It is a foundling. By creed, it is in your care. And he was already sensitive to them due to his past. In the end, Mendo and Baby Yoda are reunited in the next episode, so on top of not being able to write a story, the writers can't write emotional moments. The biggest joke of the entire show is that people will watch the finale of season 2, cry, and then immediately move on to season 3 because they won't know about the Boba show, and they'll discover that literally 6 minutes after crying, the two are back together without any explanation given even in the recap. Because in addition to being unable to write a story with emotional moments, they don't know how to make a show. But this is actually a problem caused by season 3, so let's talk about it. The first two seasons were a joke, but the third one manages to do even better. I love how nobody ever went to check if Mendolo was really uninhabitable. I love how Mendo buys a droid that happens to be the friend of the resistance guy. I love how Bo-Katan conveniently keeps her helmet on after saving Mendo even though she never wears it for more than 5 seconds the rest of the time. I love how Bo-Katan wearing her helmet didn't actually matter because the random who Mandalorian tells her to remove it 5 seconds later. I love how the Mandalorians have to eat alone in the cold and dark where they could be attacked by flying dinosaurs. I love how you can lose ownership of the sword by walking into a simple trap. If someone slaps you in the face while you're sleeping, does it mean you lose the fight? I love how the action scenes with Baby Yoda are ridiculous but no one complains because of the nostalgia of the original trilogy. I find it so amusing that this series treats the city as if it were a planet. To whom this planet is forever indebted. In The Phantom Menace, the Gungans didn't care about the war on the surface because their underwater city was far away so it wasn't their problem. But now apparently one city equals one planet. Despite being the mayor of a village with only 12 inhabitants, Carl seems to have the authority to grant permission to the Mandalorians to live on the planet. It's funny. I love that Mendo uses a Naboo ship which is completely useless for a bounty hunter. Wait, is he still a bounty hunter? 
We don't know. Now the guy is going on adventures all over the galaxy for free when it's been well established that his spore and gas is expensive. He bought the ship before he even knew that baby Yoda was going to come back into his life. So I guess he's not a bounty hunter anymore? Who knows? Some might argue that hunting people isn't the best job for a father, but he's still putting the life of baby Yoda in danger. My second favorite moment of the whole series is with the attack of the flying dinosaur. I'm out of fuel. It always gets away. Is your brain working? There's a monster that has been killing people on a regular basis, and yet they never did anything about it. Instead of saving the kid right away, they wait 24 hours. It turns out that the flying dinosaur waited 24 hours as well, but more importantly, the child was in the belly of a monster the whole time. I don't really believe any of this, but what's truly incredible is that the child had to endure the most traumatic experience of the galaxy. However, since it's Disney Star Wars, everyone applauded at the end instead of talking about it. The funniest thing is that the guy who ran out of fuel wasn't worried at all until he suddenly realized 24 hours later that the child taken by the dinosaur was his son. I'm sure someone will say that these are insignificant details, but unfortunately, in six episodes, nothing much has happened except for the sword incident, which I've already mentioned. But I'm sure something crazy will happen in the last episode to make people believe that the season was good and lure everyone back for season 4. The story of the Mandalorian is poorly paced, rushed, and complete garbage, but more importantly, it relies heavily on fan service. I don't understand why people are so excited about seeing Luke, who isn't even really here and who will eventually try to murder his own nephew. The guy shows up, looks like nothing, says almost nothing, takes the baby, leaves, and suddenly Star Wars is supposed to be saved. It's pathetic. Do people really think that it will somehow make the Disney trilogy better? It won't. Episodes 7, 8, and 9 are beyond saving. The Clone Wars was able to improve the prequels because the problem with episode 1, 2, and 3 was not the ideas. The Disney trilogy, on the other hand, has nothing but crappy ideas and no amount of additional series can make it better. Yes, even the idea with Finn is utter garbage because it means that our heroes are killing slaves and not clones, droids, or actual bad guys. Even if you give me an amazing story about Palpatine coming back, it will never fit with 7 and 8 and it won't make the end of episode 6 any less meaningless. The story of season 2 isn't one. It's just a series of cameo appearances by characters like Boba, Ahsoka, Luke and Bo-Katan. Rather than being interesting additions to the plot, they're just there for the viewers to clap. No effort is made to develop these characters or their stories. One could argue they will be fleshed out in later seasons, but Luke and Ahsoka are gone, Boba went to do his own series, and I don't know what they did to Bo-Katan, but that doesn't qualify as character development. How is someone who has never seen the Clone Wars supposed to be interested in these characters or the plot involving Mandalore? The series provides no context or background information. I bet at least a quarter of the people on the internet who are excited to see Mandalore don't actually know why and are just repeating what others are saying because it's trendy. It's so cool to see Mandalore. Why? The show didn't build anything around it. This highlights a major issue with the series. Since everything is based on fan service, the viewers need to have seen external content to fully appreciate it. For example, the show spends significantly more time introducing us to Quill compared to Ahsoka or Bo-Katan because no one knows who he is. Look at this scene from The Clone Wars. We have Kenobi in a Mandalorian armor with his lightsaber and jetpack fighting alongside Bo-Katan. Kenobi informs her that he's going to retake Mandalore by asking the Republic to provide clones and he ends up saying I'm so sorry. Just like in Revenge of the Sith. I'm so sorry. It cuts to an action scene between Sidious, Maul, and his brother with epic music. This series excels at blending fan service with new elements thanks to the characters, world building, politics, and even the music provided by the prequels. With all of this and the help of Lucas, Filoni manages to create a series that isn't as empty as The Mandalorian. Obviously the Clone Wars is far from perfect because it's filled with inconsistencies and stupid plot points, such as the fact that Maul is still alive, but you can't say nothing is happening. My point is that Filoni has never demonstrated the ability to expand the Star Wars universe. I love Ahsoka, but how much Ahsoka content do we have to sit through before someone tells him to stop? 
Filoni has a great understanding of the prequels, which is why his place is in the story group rather than as a director, especially for a live action movie since it requires a completely different skill set than making animated series. Since there's no official canon material about what happened between episodes 6 and 7, Filoni has to come up with his own ideas but it's too hard so he's resorting to repurposing old characters without providing the necessary context and world building that made the Clone Wars work. The show can't rely solely on Mendo because he's an empty character, and now that Filoni has almost exhausted all of the available characters, he must find someone else interesting to focus on. That's why Bo-Katan has become one of the main characters. Unfortunately, writing Bo-Katan is too hard as well, so he also has to rely on actors' cameos such as Jack, Christopher, and even Jar Jar, which destroys the immersion of the show. It's crazy to think that in 22 episodes, the show hasn't introduced a single new idea to the Star Wars franchise. Instead, it relies heavily on nostalgia from the first two trilogies. And like I said before, it's the same with all of Disney Star Wars. They use Duel of the Fates in the Kenobi trailer not because they don't have the resources to hire a composer, but rather because they are creatively bankrupt. But why would they try to make something new anyway? Recycling the same characters over and over again seems to be working just fine. It's true that when you see how bad the Disney trilogy is, it's easy to trick yourself into believing that the Disney shows are good. No one expects The Mandalorian to be perfect. Star Wars never has been, but that doesn't mean you can write garbage like this. Putting familiar characters on screen does not qualify as a story. I was going to discuss missed opportunities, but there is no point wasting our time on ideas that Disney will never produce due to the lack of creativity. They're remaking Moana, by the way, and they're gender swapping Luke now that Rey has stolen everything from him. It's laughable how low people's expectations have become thanks to the garbage Disney trilogy. Having 5 empty episodes per season is unacceptable, especially when there are only 8 episodes in total. It's also ironic how those who were outraged when Ryan Johnson destroyed Luke's character in The Last Jedi are now uploading a deepfake version of Jake. A deepfake. We'll never see Luke, Han and Leia together again, but that's okay because Disney will probably do it in 5 years with a computer and everyone will clap. It also makes me laugh that the little bits of world building in The Mandalorian are leading us toward the Disney trilogy. Anyway, I can't wait to see Ahsoka, a Star Wars story. It's going to be so cool.